And what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna dive into talk about the problems that may arise with relocating to somewhere new. We're also gonna talk about the ultimate three elements that I use for every relocation, also including final tips and solutions towards the end. So make sure you stick around. It's gonna be a good one. See you in a sec. What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel if you're new and just joining here what's going on my name is benjamin harding i'm an experienced traveler and a video creator and i put videos on all my experiences uh, so this can help you down the line with your travels firstly i just want to say a massive thank you for all the likes the comments and the subscribes it's really helped me with feedback on how to make the channel and the content better and so i can keep making be uh, better videos for you also down the line We've got a lot to get stuck into today, so make sure you stick around. Let's get into it. Okay, so to catch you guys up to speed from my last video, I've pretty much been here in Western Australia, near the Perth area, just applying for work, trying to source long-term further accommodation, and also I've been looking back on like relocation videos on what worked within those relocations to apply here. And this gave me the inspiration to dive into like the elements of kind of what I'd normally apply in those locations, which in, in turn so inspired me to create this video. So just a quick overview of my relocation experience. I've been traveling the globe for like the last 10, 10 years long term. Most of my relocations have, have been about anywhere between five months and above in each place so in, t in total I've probably done it about 10 to 15 times in doing this I have learned pretty much what works and what doesn't work and it kind of applying my personal preferences for that obviously over through this video you can kind of apply this to kind of your interests and how you want to pursue that sort of relocation okay let's dive into the problems slash thoughts that you'll maybe having for the relocation Whenever you move and relocate to a new place, new destination, this can be super overwhelming, man. Like going to a new place where you've never been before, they can either speak different languages. It's all basically alien to you. And in order to get there, you obviously need to do all the research in terms of looking into certain things and kind of best provide them the right avenues to make that relocation good. It can be risky, it can be challenging, it can be, it is, sorry, the unknown. Also, the thought of starting from scratch every single time is really daunting. It's like leaving all of your structures that you have at home and literally putting that to one side and then just going out and doing it all again from the bottom ground level and working your way up again, which can be pros and cons like in a good way it's good practice it's good repetition it it hones in on your transferable skills and also your ability to be resilient and push past it with becoming better like a better you but yeah it's i can certainly see it being very overwhelming and it's overwhelmed me loads of times especially with the relocations that i've done the one that i moved to here with perth wa has probably been the hardest one that i've ever I've ever experienced in 10 years but yeah pushing through that hurdle hurdle will only make you a stronger person anyway also when you relocate there's a lot of things that you need to figure out that are big stress factors for example finding accommodation um, and looking for new places if that's hostels booking in for one two three days or booking in weekly rates for what's available in that area and then if it's not available then looking for other accommodation and trying to find a way to get a roof over your head then there's also like a sourcing of food from supermarkets or buying out this all depends on your budget and obviously how much you want to spend uh, which also means you're gonna to have to have a good little balance a safety net as I call it of money in the bank to keep you going until you do find work either within that place or online or however you make money a good way I feel to describe this and I'm taking this from a, a guy that I really look up to on YouTube called Dan Co he talks about problems and it being a way to life is about literally as he says, solving problems. And I've applied this to relocation and traveling because whenever I've been relocating to a new place, I would recently come up with a problem here. And then 
I'd work my best to solve it and get it sorted. I'd solve that problem. I'd move slowly forward, creating that momentum, creating that progress. But then another problem would creep up. And then it's like, okay, we need to solve that problem to move forward. So then I'll put all my energy in and solve that problem. Wicked, we're moving forward again. But then another one cre creeps up. And as you kind of gain this momentum and this strategy to kind of make it work for you and solve them problems, then I feel that you'll be contributing to not only your success, but your self-development and yeah, moving forward to enjoy that relocation and reap the benefits of it down the line. Most of these problems that I've come across so far come in a few, a few of different categories. One of them would be health. Another, another one would be wealth. Relationships is another one. And also technically can be happiness, yeah with how, I, how happy I am in, in these certain places. So the first element that for me is essential is lifestyle. Like, what does the lifestyle look like for you in that relocation? Do you like being by the beach and being coastal, living there? Do you like being in the countryside near the mountains? Are you a city person and wanna always be around the um, nine to five and busy life? Like. In terms of kind of, well, how you've either grown up or what you're used to or what you prefer, like again, this is all completely trial and error. From my background, I was countryside born and raised in Oxford, uh, Oxfordshire. And obviously like I've trial and tested, like living in the mountains, living by the coast, uh, whether that's like Andorra in the ski season or Ibiza in the summer. And like trial and testing these different things, it's allowed me to kind of put into perspective where I want to live in Australia and here living in WA, Western Australia, like, oh, man, I love it by the coast, man. I thrive, thrive by the coast down there. Um, I like having the access to the city, but I don't like being in the city for too long. So whatever your lifestyle look, wants to look like, I'd 100% try and test it out loads of different kind of varieties to see what you like the most. And then yeah, see where you end up with the relocation. Another key important factor would be your passions and your hobbies. For example, do you like playing sports? Do you like playing football? Do you like water sports, surfing? Are you creative? Do you like making music? Do you like cre creating videos? I think that wherever you're, whatever you like doing, that's also gonna correspond to where you want to relocate and where you find yourself more happy because those passions are what make you, you, right? So that'll also compare to kind of where you want to be. And then we get on to like the work-life balance. Speaking from experience, I've tried all different avenues of this. I've had all work and no play. That was in Northern Territory. I've had a bit of work and a bit of play. That was in Gold Coast. And then I had all play, which was when I traveled from Gold Coast to, to Cairns. And like this is from the trial and error methods and, and seeing what actually like I prefer to do and what makes it, it work. I've got to say that like having that balance is is crucial because it allows you to kind of not only make the income and get the money in, but then also utilize that money on doing things that you want to do in life and enjoy yourself. And that's where the happiness factor will come from. And I think that whenever you relocate to a new place, you've got to suss this out for yourself. Like going online, searching on Google, searching on YouTube, that um, and looking through like Instagram reels and that, that'll help to a certain extent. But also I found that once you go into that place and you're experiencing it, like through first person lived experiences, you gain a different type of knowledge from it. Your senses are heightened, your emotions become clear, and you just gain a lot of clarity from what it's like to live in that location. And you can't get that from literally a phone screen. <laughs> you need to be in and amongst it to kind of see for yourself, is this gonna work for me? Do I see myself here long term? Or do I need to relocate or find somewhere else or search for somewhere else in order to see if I'll be happier there? And so that brings us on to the next element, which is progression slash self-development. This is a big one. Like as humans in what we choose to do with our lives, progression plays a vital role because we want to be moving forward. We want to be successful. We want to feel appreciated. Um, and we want to focus on what 
our lives can potentially be. This is obviously shown so much on like nowadays on online media of like what our lives could be like. And in relation to the travel industry and relocation, like problems can creep up all the time, <laughs> literally all the time. And just when you think you've solved one, another one comes up and then you focus on it. But like I said before, this is about practice. This is about honing the skill of solving these problems. And like, I've become a lot more clear on them now and to not see them as problems, but more as opportunities. Like this gives me a chance to see what I'm made of. Like how resilient can I be? And for your travels, in re and in re relocation, like how resilient can you be? What can go wrong on your travels? And how quick can you bounce back and make it work for you? Progression is certainly a way of life, whether it's in your work life or in your leisure time. And I find that if you can kind of add progression and it, uh, use it in both industries, both places, then it can certainly be used as a transferable skill. Two major components of when progress is achieved is the affirmation of when I know I've done well, or I know I've done right, or the appreciation towards it, that it makes me feel good, it makes me feel happy. Another one is a sense of fulfillment that I've achieved something. For example, like in creating my videos, um, like in the past, when I first started recording videos for YouTube, like my videos were like three minutes long. They were terrible, <laughs> but they were, they were good memories, of course. But now my videos go up to like 20 minutes. I become a little bit more confident on the camera. I focus on kind of the content that is, is helpful in a way, and I dial down on that. Another good way that I've learned to progress is to install different ways of action. For example, like I talked about this in a manifestation video a while back, it's being able to attack a task, both physically and mentally. There is also spiritually and emotionally as well, but the first two have been the main ones. Like, for example, when I was working in civil construction in Northern Territory, I built up the skills of manual handling, I got onto the machines, um, trade assistant work, and now the job that I'm gonna be doing here in WA is gonna be on the mines um, and building my skills on that. In terms of mentally, that's been observed and actionable by the books that I've read. Like I never used to be a person that used to love, bu love books. Like back in school, my, my mates can tell you that I didn't really like school, man. Like I, I felt that the learning was like a, an unenjoyable task. I didn't like it. But here, like I've kind of shifted my mindset in a way that I see it as learning about other people's stories, which is what I love so much from traveling. And now I've applied that to reading those stories and learn about those stories from people's in books and I've read over about like six or seven books now and I find the stories fascinating and that's just my way of learning so being able to implement that type of progression it, not only in the relocation that you're doing and learning about things but you can only move forward if you keep attacking it and get the reps in. Another great way to install progress is to is to install habits into your everyday lifestyle to create consistency that compounds over time. I learned this from James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits. It completely reshaped my mindset and how to do things every day. Um, and an example of this would be uh, my brand online, Seeker Collective. With the Instagram, we basically started off with zero, like completely like nothing. And over time, I've basically reached out to digital 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 creators all across the world to basically collaborate with them to share their travel experiences of their content on our platform to our community and this has obviously grown over time i think now we've got over 200 plus collabs and this is just every single day creating a post putting it up and just stacking it on top of each other. So one day this can obviously like help more people. So one last little insight on the topic of progression. The reason to why I moved back to Western Australia was specifically for the FIFO and the mining industry. So fly and fly out, where basically you can get a job, you fly out to the mines, you do the work for like two, to th um, one to two weeks or however long, and then you come back and you have a week off. The money's really good, the career opportunities are really good, so it's definitely attracted me. 
but the progression in this is where I need to become more experienced and more qualified in order to get that job. So over the last two, three, four weeks even of applying for jobs, I trial and tested what um, employers needed. And so I've focused on not only getting my first aid, which I achieved last week, but working at Heights, which I'm doing soon, and also my HR license, which is gonna be in, in a week or so. So building on that progression, being able to um, get those qualifications, those certificates, will not only install a better work-life balance, a better lifestyle within living in WA, Western Australia, it'll also contribute massively to my happiness overall and enjoying my time here. So to get the ball rolling, what sort of progression would you like to achieve on your next relocation? This is a good way to get loads of thoughts and brainstorm a few ideas because it starts with thinking about it, making, the, making these um, ideas in your head and actionable items to work on down the line. Moving on to the final element, which is one of my favorites, uh, it is community. It is being able to connect with like-minded people wherever you go, whether that's online or in person, whether that's in hostels, doing different activities down nearby the beach or joining different clubs. And you know, like recently in WA, I've had a bit of a deficit of this. I've lived out in Burns Beach, which is a bit more rural, it's more families. And it's been beautiful to live here. Like it's really nice change from living and jumping from back and forth to hostels, but also, I've realized like how much I miss people, like how much I miss like, catching up with new friends and doing new activities. Whether you're an introvert, so you're super shy and you, sh and you struggle to maybe talk to kind of big groups of people, or you're an extrovert where you're super bubbly, life of the party. I mean, like connecting with communities, this can all come at different speeds and kind of the person that you are and how sociable you are. But I find that as humans anyway in general we like to connect with people to learn about our kind of their experiences and it just gives us a broad and a fresh perspective on life when you do um, tackle your next relocation you'll find that there's certain ways to find communities trying out activity tours um, within that city you're booking onto different tours I did this in Ellie Beach where we was in a sociable hostel anyway but I did tours to go out to Whit Sundays, did sailing trips. I'd meet people in bars and just get chatting in com communal areas in the hostel as well. And this is all, like I said, this all comes from practice from putting yourself out there and seeing what happens. The popular facilities where I found to kind of establish a bit of a community has been in my local gym here, down at Aluka Fitness. I speak to the trainers in there. I speak to the, some of the, uh, the gym goers there. When I go down to Scarborough, it's literally located on the coast. I'll speak to the bar staff. Yeah, it's certain ways to kind of connect with people and, and, and for, for sure, this is a massive benefit for not only your mental health, but your social independence as well. Like being able to kind of talk to anyone as strangers and turn them into somewhat friends down the line. Another great way to kind of find a community is online because we have it accessible to our laptops and to our fingertips on our phones. So whenever I go to a new, relo uh, new location, whether it's like either Western Australia or uh, Northern Territory, they normally have groups on Facebook and you can kind of see like the kind of engagements on there for example like we got an australia backpackers group where you can kind of see who's who's out and traveling who's doing different tours who's moving around and obviously you can join these for free so even jumping on them and seeing what people are up to and seeing if you can find travel mates could be a a route or a path to building new friends and finding a former community so to summarize three elements of relocation lifestyle progression and community and not just that you'll notice over time how these three can also cross pollinate into each other so for example like having a good community can have an impact on what your lifestyle looks like with going out and meeting friends the progression that you make in certain fields can also give you time and money back to then do things with your community and have a good lifestyle and then having a good community around you will also help you network 
and meet new people, which then will lead to more progression if you stay consistent with it. And then also having a happier lifestyle because you've got more people to do things with. You see how these all cross into each other in some form or other. And finally, onto the final tips section. So when you do relocate to a new place, I'm gonna be honest and upfront about this, you will make mistakes. In the last 10 years, I have made so many mistakes that I have lost count. But you see, I see these as successful failures. I've taken this from the Jeff Bezos book, The Shareholder Letters, where it goes into talk about how whenever you make a mistake, the learning curve is big. Like you being able to take in what didn't work and how to implement it next to make it better. And so you're getting success from it down the line, just not right now. So like I said, if you stick with the consistency and learn over time, both manually, practically sorry, or mentally as well, then it will get better over time. This isn't a, this isn't a one day thing, this is a long term thing. So with that said, trial and test as much as you can. For example, like whenever you go and relocate somewhere new, only commit to a hostel and trial and test it for like two to three days. See if you like it, if you don't, then find somewhere new. Once you do this, you become better at analyzing the situation, analyzing different areas, different locations, different properties, different accommodations, and it's just literally stretching that muscle to make it stronger and to make it better. Depending on your budget and obviously your bank account, try and make use of all the free activities. These could, these could be um, promoted in hostel areas or in bars or online on the Facebook groups. So see what is for free, what you could do to engage in new communities, into networking with people, into finding out about different work and about different jobs. That's actually how I got my job here as a jeweler off cider. It was literally through knowing someone that I met in Darwin like a year and a half ago. Like this small world, man. You just got to network and put yourself out there and that's all for me today with this video i just want to say a massive thank you for watching and sticking on through to the end if you've got some value out of this video then go give it a nice big thumbs up uh subscribe for more content coming soon to this channel and we'll see you guys back in the next video take care guys see you later